to a point, yes, you can't ignore the incredible achievements of high te the high-tech world. Mm -hmm. You can't ignore it. I mean, somebody let me try on one of these uh, face things you put on and it get, puts you into a virtual reality world and you can travel anywhere you like. And so it was Saturday night, so I thought, well, I go, I go, to, I go to Rio, I go to South Africa, I go to Mexico, I'll come home again. And it was fun, you know, press, oh, wow, that's South Africa. And it was incredibly realistic what you were looking at uh, within this thing, but it was a complete illusion, a total, a total fantasy world. Um, but then the appliance, apl application of this high tech means that we can achieve far more, you can do far more, you can do far more in medicine and everything else. But, and this is the big but, which you're quite right to draw attention to, the effect has actually been to concentrate power and the agenda in the hands of a small number of very, very powerful companies and actually make a small number of people incredibly rich at the expense of the rest. Technology ought to be something that benefits all of us in the spreading of wealth. This technological revolution so far has not. And, and it so is it is a question about the living standards of people right. and um, what you can achieve with that technology. But it's also the cultural impact because Marx talked about alienation of the proletarian, which effectively meant that the worker felt completely alienated from the products of his or her labor. Mm. But now you get alienated from the uh, products of your consumption as well. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when, when two people get together in social media, there's always a, co a corporation somewhere trying to manipulate their behavior in the interests of the corporation. Uh, so the, the technology is fantastic. I, I, I can't live with, without my smartphone. I'm a, I'm a techie. I'm a science fiction buff. I have to confess to this. I want to live in communism. And for me, the ideal communism is Star Trek because you have machines doing all the work and people have philosophical discussions and they explore the universe. <laughs> but I fear that capitalism is leading us towards the matrix. Who grows the f <laughs> but, but who grows the food? The, the, uh, who wrote the food? Who grows the food? Nobody. It comes out of replicators. No, but the... <laughs> Star Trek... He hasn't the... watched Star Trek. No, I, I, I'm just asking the question. That you're sitting in this high-tech, wonderful world. We're watching screens, dot, 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 dot. Everything's happening. Who's growing the tomatoes? No one. <laughs> so who, uh, what do you eat? They are, they are produced through fantastic technology that can simulate the best organic food ever. It won't be impossible to No, it's, uh, no you, uh, I ask you that question because you're quite right. I was in a <laughs> college last week where they've got... And then uh, you can grow your own food as a hobby. You can have an allotment. <laughs> That's a good idea. Well, that's a really good idea. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Well, I, last week I was in a college where they had something called the hands-free hectare. They yeah. produced a hectare of yes. barley, and nobody has been on that field for two years. There you are. The crop is done completely by machine, and drones checking on what's going on, and the operator sends the combine harvester up and down, stops it when necessary, and it stops automatically if a rabbit runs in front of it. So it's protecting wildlife. <laughs>